everyone! Today I am back with a gorgeous drawing of everyone's favorite contentious couple and some tips and tricks for dramatic art. I intended for this piece to be just a speed paint, but I really enjoyed working on it, so I wanted to chat about it. It's been a good minute since I've sat down and done a really nice piece like this with the heavier detail and shading, and I didn't realize it, but I kind of miss doing things like this. Most of my art lately has been leaning towards cutesy stuff, and while I do enjoy that, it was fun to work on something a little bit more serious. So that being said, let's talk about dramatic art and how to pull it off. To start off, I want to talk about the posing I have Moon and Keebly in here. As you can see in the recording, I started off with a pretty basic rough sketch, using a big blocky brush. I was just trying to transcribe the basic shape and attitude of the drawing from the image in my mind onto the canvas. I knew I wanted them to be in flight, circling around each other with their snouts almost touching. Once that was roughed out, I went over it with a much smaller sketch brush to actually figure out the details of their bodies. This is where the specific thematic elements of the posing comes in. A good way to build dynamic poses is to have them contrast. Contrast means a lot of things, but an easy way to think about it is that contrast means different than. And different than means unique. Unique poses and pieces are more memorable and moving to see. And you'll notice Moon and Keebly differ in three key places. Their main bodies are arching in opposite directions, their tails curve in different directions, and their wings both arc away from each other. Their arms even curve away from each other a little bit too. All these subtle motions show that they are different dragons, different forms, and it helps keep the piece interesting. If both of them were curving the same way right next to each other, it would look stilted and kind of lifeless. You'll note that even though I took care to contrast the motion in this piece, I did line their snouts up. You can see here that they are on the same gentle curve. This subtly tells you that they are in sync, that they match. It smooths the action and movement of the piece into one calm center. So that's one way to work on dramatic pieces. Make sure all your poses are unique. Try to show motion. Bodies, human and dragon alike, aren't stiff and stilted. They are always, always in motion, one way or another. And with most dramatic pieces, if you take a bit of risk and push the motion, it tends to pay off. Something else that played a pretty heavy part in my design phase for this drawing is symbolism and the designs of the characters. Keebly and Moon have a pretty glaring sun and moon dynamic with colors, tribes, and even personality, so I tried to work that into the design. Everything about Keebly is supposed to pop. His colors are bright and varied, his wings are sharper and flared more, his body language is more open and messy. Moon is the opposite. Her wings are smooth and relaxed, her body language is more calm and slack. Her colors are soothing and dark, without much variation outside the silver scales. In a kind of tribute to her name, I went ahead and put the three moons in her wing design, too. I know it's not strictly within the rules or whatever, but it feels good to switch things up. For me, art is all about vibes, not necessarily checking all the boxes. I was really trying to keep in mind the personality of the dragons as I drew them, and that makes the design and sketching process more fun, even as it helps enhance your final project. Honestly, working on this and talking about it now kind of makes me want to do a piece that actually focuses on the sun-moon contrast. That could definitely be a fun project for the future. And now we'll talk about lighting and stuff. Obviously, lighting is kind of everyone's go-to for dramatic art, and hey, it sure works. I hadn't really intended to do any highlights for this piece, but while I was doing the shading, I suddenly remembered rim lighting is a thing, a thing which I haven't done in like a million years, so that's what I went with. Rim lighting, as the name implies, just means you go over the edges of a piece with your highlights. It implies that the light source is behind your character. Kind of like the secret agent walking away from an explosion in slow motion. Or the hero cresting the hill on horseback with the sun behind them. Dramatic lighting tells your brain to pay attention. I used a pretty soft rim light here because although this piece has some emotion to it, it's overall meant to be a very soft and loving emotion, not an epic grand one. So it's extremely subtle, using a warm pink-red for Keebly and a soft white-gray for Moon. I've definitely talked about this multiple times before, but I'll say it again, because it never hurts. Don't shade in black. I have a shading tutorial already up if you want more details on that, but shading and highlighting in color brings life to your piece. I do my shading with multiply layers, I think that's what they're called in a lot of programs, and that's what they're called in Krita. I do my highlights with the addition layer, and I think that one has different names and versions in several programs, but basically, it takes your highlight layer and makes it very bright. Now, here are the colors I used for the shading and highlighting in this piece. Although you might not guess it, the darker colors are actually my addition colors. The lighter ones are my shading. There is a reason for this. The brighter colors for shading mean more color. That one's simple, and I've explained it before. I've discovered, at least for the addition layer in Krita, it works best if you use a pretty dark color. 
A dark rust red gets a really pleasant golden overlay, for instance. That's the one that I use most. Anything lighter and you end up with a pretty white color no matter what you do. So using a darker color helps you actually get some of that shade in the final look. I'd encourage you to play around with it in whatever program you use. The best way to learn how your specific program works for your specific art style is to try some different things out. For Keebly, I used a pretty dark rust color since he's a warm tone dragon. Since Moon is mostly cool and dark, I used a very dark purple gray. I had used a more purple color at first, and I didn't like how bright the highlights ended up being and how purple and violet they looked, so I moved it closer to dark gray until I was happy with the lightness of it. And then finally, the background. You'll notice that I even used the background to add some contrast in. It fades from blue-black to pale yellow. I ended up using it as a kind of sunset, even though that hadn't been my intention, and I'm pretty happy with it. The reason I did it the way I did, though, is because I wanted a background that would pop against both dragons. However, since one is light and one is dark, their colors are on opposite sides of the color wheel, so I needed a pretty bold gradient. Keebly pops against the dark, and Moon shows against the pale, so it works out well. Overall, I am pretty happy with this piece. I really like the lines, too. They were so smooth and pleasing to look at. I like the moonbly color contrast, the sun and moon kind of thing, so it's always fun to draw. It's been a long time since I've done a what's-its-face on art and not talk solely about character or storylines. Honestly, I've talked about my thoughts on Moonbly pretty recently, back when I did my video on Winter and his character arc, I think, so I don't want to exhaust the topic. Back when I was getting into the fandom, this discourse on these two was pretty hot. I got into it around book 7 or 8, something like that. So, Moonbly versus Winter Watcher heyday. I think it's calmed down a lot since then, luckily. I've always been into Moonbly for a multitude of reasons, but when I was younger, a big one was definitely that I just liked Keebly more. Baby Cypress totally had a crush on Keebly, but I think about 50% of the fandom would admit the same thing, so it's probably not outside the usual. Of course, these days, I explained in that video about Winter, I prefer them for plenty of legitimate reasons too, but I'll admit I still adore Keebly and he and Moon are pretty precious together. Anyways, that'll wrap up today's episode. The takeaway for today is, remember to vary your poses and push for motion. Everything is always moving. Play around with your shading and highlighting colors as well, and don't be afraid to do stuff that's different from your usual. My style is constantly evolving, as I'm sure people can tell. I don't really do the same thing for very long. So never let yourself stagnate. Push your art, keep what works, and discard what doesn't. If you enjoyed this video, there's plenty more where it came from on my channel. I talk about all kinds of stuff from art to characters to story time. Feel free to like or subscribe if you had a good time. And as always, remember to comment below. I love reading y'all's thoughts. Check out the description of this video for my links and info on programs and whatnot. Thanks so much for watching, and please have a wonderful day.